Well, hello, welcome, Sharon. Um, I am so I'm so excited to introduce you to my friends and audience that watch watch this channel. So thank you for being here. Um, we have been friends about ten years, I guess. Mm -hmm. We met at a mediumship retreat in Seabeck, Washington, and thank you for being here and sharing your experience on out-of-body experiences. Oh, well, thank you, Kim. It's an honor and always a pleasure to be with you and see your beautiful face and, and connect, connect with you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I remember, of course, when I was in Port, when I lived in Portland, I, I think we, you gave me a reading, you're an amazing reader. Okay. I'm going to read your bio. Okay? okay. All right. With over 20 years of experience, and following her second near-death experience in 2001, Sharon serves as a certified psychic medium, channel, spiritual counselor, life coach, and hypnotherapist, specializing in past life therapy and experiencer memory recovery. Ooh. Sharon's realized goal is to assist as many people as possible in realizing their true self. So anyway, welcome, welcome. Yay. <laughs> so I would Thank love you. to know um, how you got started in um, lucid dreaming or, or out-of-body experiences. Of course. So it happened by accident. <laughs> 1998, my stepfather passed. And um, it was the first time anyone close to me had passed. We were really close. <clears throat> And I started, uh, well, first of all, I wanted to know what happens when you die. Being, uh, I was raised Catholic and I just didn't resonate with the, I wasn't a good Catholic, neither were my parents. I didn't resonate with the the teachings that my grandmother taught us because we lived with my grandmother for a little while uh, after a divorce. I didn't resonate that you either go to heaven or hell and, and you know, all the judgmental stuff that was um that was my grandmother was telling us about. And so I needed to know what happens when you die. And my sister gave me the book, you don't, we don't die by George Anderson. And I started reading those books, George Anderson and James von Prague and John Edwards in those days when they became popular. And as I was reading, I was like, this makes a lot of sense. This I understand. And I started to connect with my dad I want to connect with my, my dad. Like I said, I wanted to know that he still existed <clears throat> in my afterlife and what happens. And so I was doing, and this was back in 1999, 1998. So there wasn't a lot out there like uh -huh. what there is now. And I came across an article that equated out-of-body experiences with sleep paralysis. Okay. Right? And that's yeah. when I understood, oh, well, that's what that is because I didn't uh, know what it was. Yeah. 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 I thought I was dying. I thought there was something wrong with me. <laughs> I see. So, right, right. I yeah. think everybody has that, though, the sleep mm, paralysis. Some people don't. Okay. Um, you know, with people I've talked to, I mean, we all have it, but not all, all of us wake up during the sleep paralysis. Right. State. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So our body goes into it. Okay. Yes. Uh, and so one of the one of the components of the out-of-body state I read on that in that article was that you can communicate with your loved ones who are on the other side. So I'm like, oh, uh -huh. this is a great way for me to have a tangible connection with my dad, right? Yeah. And I started reading every book I could get my hand on, the classics back then, which was Robert Monroe mm -hmm. and uh, Robert Peterson, William Buhlman, uh, all those books. And I started exercise doing the practices to be able to leave my body in a, in a conscious state every night. And in, in between my sleep cycles, I do something, some type wow. of exercise. Wow. And I was able to, yeah. And I was able to um, consciously project out of my physical body within about, I'm going to say six weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's remarkable. That doesn't sound like a long training. <laughs> no, it wasn't for me. Mm -mm. Wow. 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 Okay. So. Um, could you explain the difference between astral travel and lucid dreaming? Because I think a lot of people think of those are similar. Okay, so this is how I understand it. Lucid dreaming 
is when you're in the dream state. Uh, um, the dream state is basically a hallucination where you it's subjective, and we're processing could be processing your day. Your you know you. Uh, I mean, it's all symbolic, basically what our co higher consciousness is uh, giving us information on. But you're asleep in the dream state. You know, when we go, we're in a dream and something strange happens. We don't even recognize it as something strange <laughs> because we're not conscious. A lucid dream means that you are conscious in the, you become conscious in the dream state. Uh -huh. And you're like, oh, I'm dreaming. You know, if a pink elephant shows up, <laughs> you're like, this is weird. This wouldn't happen in the normal, my normal life. So I must be dreaming. And so you become aware that you're dreaming and then you can make the experience, turn the experience into an astral projection or an out-of-body experience where you become conscious and you control the environment. You can make it an, an, an objective type of experience. I see. So are you saying that you could go from a lucid dream to astral travel? Yes. Okay. And is that, like an easy, I mean, is that a normal way or easy way to astral travel? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it depends on <clears throat> on the person. You know, you're working through your fear state as you practice with okay. moving into your higher, con you know, your multi dimensional self and tra and traveling. Um, but but astral traveling is basically being. I mean, we're doing it all the time anyway. Our consciousness is going through the realms where. You know, we're doing whatever we do in the um, in our, our multidimensional self. This isn't. Thank goodness, this isn't all all who we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Our soul. So our right. soul aspects are off doing other things too. And so yes. we're tapping into also tapping into that part of ourselves. The more we work at being conscious in the in the um, higher the out of body state, the astral travel state. So astral travel is just when you're using your consciousness to travel through the astral realms on a conscious level and you bring the memory back into uh -huh. your conscious state here that's how you are conscious of what you are you know experiencing and and you can control your experiences wow and do you feel like anybody could do this everybody can do this we're already doing it it's just a matter of being aware and yeah. having conscious control and focus. Okay. I mean, kids right. do it pretty easily because they're used to it, right? And uh, okay. yeah, becoming lucid in their dreams, having what we call out-of-body experiences. It's it's normal for kids, norm, you know, a normal okay. kid. Yeah. Okay. Because when I think of that, that astral travel and i can understand lucid dreaming because i i i'm i can remember having lucid dreams that's not too far from my you know abilities yeah, sure. <laughs> but then when i think of astral travel and when i've tried it i think i'm trying to rem i'm trying to make my spirit rise up from my body and I'm looking, but I have never been able to do that. You know what I mean? Like some people can rise up and see like on the rooftop of their house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's almost like they're consciously can leave their body and rise up. Right. That's the out-of-body experience. Yes. What you're doing is disengaging from your physical senses. So your body is asleep, but your mind is awake and you're aware and you're not really leaving your body. It's a misnomer. You're okay. actually moving within <laughs> and oh. your awareness, because there isn't really no out here we're projecting. Right. And so okay. your awareness is that your physical body is still sleeping in bed but you have disengaged your awareness from your physical body. It doesn't mean you've died or anything like that, but you've disengaged from your physical senses. And now you are free, this light body or this higher, um, higher frequency body uh, is free to travel through the astral planes. And that's the typical or classic out of body experience where you can lift up. What I do is I just sit up when I know I'm in that, that out of body state where my body is completely asleep and my mind is awake. And I, you know, sometimes, and you can't tell the difference because it feels, it's just as physical, if not more, when you're in the out-of-body state. 
So you so, sit and you sit up? I just sit up and go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> your body, your physical body is still laying down or your physical body is sitting up? My physical body is still laying down in the bed or my, okay. I'm disengaged from my physical senses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my physical body, as I know it, okay, is still laying in the bed and it feels just as physical. I have, when I've been in that, when I do that, a lot of times I'll, if I can't tell the difference between whether I'm physical or non-physical in the, in my second body, I call it, I'll jump up to see if I can float. Yeah. Okay. If I can float, that means I'm in the, my uh, second body. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know. <laughs> I, it is when you think about it. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's probably one of the best things we can do for our spiritual growth because we're becoming, a, we're aware. First of all, it, it helps us, it, it helps us not be afraid to die because there, there's the only difference between an out-of-body experience and a near-death experience is that the near-death experience involves trauma to the body, right? An out-of-body experience, there's no trauma. You are lifting up or moving away from your physical senses, your physical body, and you have um, complete uh, awareness. That is a classic out of body experience. Uh huh. Okay. Wow. So what? Um, okay. I mean, I have I have a lot of questions. Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> What's a, the light body? Because I I have a friend. Her name is Dr. Gail. She has a YouTube channel. And she travels with her light body to starships and things like that. Now, I mean, this is getting a little, maybe a different subject, but she, yeah. I think she says it's by her light body. Is that, is there a difference? Well, it, it, it is, there's not a difference. It just means that she has, has the ability to manifest her light body. That's her vehicle. Cause we, we use a vehicle to travel. Okay. okay. This is our vehicle here our physical body. And when we disengage from our physical body, we still mm -hmm. utilize a vehicle, whether it be an orb or, you know, a, a round light orb um, or, or another body, we can manifest another body. I've seen myself as so many different physical bodies, a mermaid many, many, many times from the water world because of my NDE <laughs> where I was taken to the water world. I've seen myself as an aquatic male, but different than a mer. I've seen myself as um, another type of human. I've seen myself as extraterrestrial, many extraterrestrial type of other planetary beings, been on other planets, that kind of thing. But yeah, you can use your, and I've got I, I've gone on starships many, many times, just saw some feline beings. I was with feline beings recently on a starship just a few days ago. Okay. And so it's just as physical. And what we're, what I'm doing is accessing another part of me that's doing this. And yes, you can, we all have light bodies. We all do. It's some frequency. So it sounds like she's accessing that frequency of her, the body that she uses to travel. Uh huh. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. So is there a difference um, between say this, the out of body experience, lucid dreaming or astral travel uh, with shamanic journeying? Mm, I don't think it's that much different. Uh, shamanic journeying is done through, well, through meditation, right. And through, um, through plant medicine, that type of thing. Uh, so it, it depends. There could be a mental, you could have a mental projection, which is like remote viewing and shamanic okay. journeying. Okay, okay. That type of thing. That's what I was yeah. 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 Which is different. Um, well, you still are aware that you're a lot, mo a lot of your consciousness is still in your body and you're aware you're in your body, but you're projecting your consciousness, um, a part of your consciousness somewhere to observe. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. a good point there. The remote viewing Okay. And I do, you know, this for me, the shamanic journey, I mean, it's not required for the plant medicine, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to me, it's that drum beat, right? That changes your yes. brain wave from the beta alpha to the theta yeah. or so, or maybe even the delta um, to, to use that to go into an altered state. But that's right. a little, you're saying that's more like remote viewing. 
It depends. Okay. You know, if you're, it, 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 everyone's different and it depends on the, how, what I understand, how the depth of where you have gone into the, the brainwave state where you okay. do are able to send enough of your consciousness away from your physical body where you're dis you're disengaged from your physical senses to where it does feel like you're, you know, in an out of body state. Okay. okay. And when you okay. have a classic out of body experience, it, experience, you know it <laughs> because okay. it is just as real as sitting here, if not more real. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, and I've had a, one or two journeys that I felt were very different. Yeah. A shamanic journey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That's wonderful. I mean, I love this. Okay. What is uh, some of the benefits of doing this astral travel? Oh, there's so many. Um, well, number one, and I have a list that, that I um, do, you know, that I've, break down in my class, my course, uh, is alleviating the fear of death. Okay. Number okay. one. Right. Mm -hmm. And also you can connect to loved ones. Okay. Yeah. You also can connect with your guides, your spirit guides, uh, your angels. I've seen many, many angels communicated with, with angels. You can also, um, you can heal people that are here and your, your physical body from the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. heal your, um, you can heal people in groups as well, where you, you uh, meet uh, and support and have a healing group where you can heal people on the planet or on the other side. Um, oh, wow. I've done wow, many, wow. Yeah, so I've done many spirit rescues from the other side. I mean, I do them here too, but spirit rescues, there's so much work. And um, you also can, um, you can, uh, how do I say it? Uh, you can uh, create, what's the word? Uh, your psychic abilities <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. because you're bringing through light and you're using your inner senses on the other side. So you can hone your psychic abilities here, bring that, that back into the physical realm. Okay. You can yeah. alleviate so many fears that you have, right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That we all have and we we'll work through them. And um, there's something else. Uh, I mean, there's the list goes on exploring your multidimensional self yeah. travel to other planets travel throughout the universe uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> wow so when you let me ask you about the healing centers that you talked about or the group healing well first of all yes. so healing can so let's just say if i have i don't know let's say i have something going on with my heart well maybe it's atrial fib or something and can i go in an astral travel go to a healing center perhaps and have oh, yes. that work on? Yes, you can. Now, okay. you know, everyone has their own life plan about what that entails, right? And yeah. so you can, yes, you can definitely travel to the temples, to the healing to the healing centers and uh, and get work done all the time. Wow. Yeah, I have a temple that I've created with a group on the other side that um, which is a meeting place which has um, healing rooms, uh, a big dolphin pool with, with an access to the ocean you know it's up on a hill and and we have speakers there and presentate you know guide masters that come and, oh wow uh, yeah nice. oh my gosh that's mm -hmm. amazing and so would this would you would use the same room that you would go for individual as same as a group i mean you would take a group there and yourself oh. i mean if you would just go by yourself or you could take a group you can take a group. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Oh, wow. You can also seek out, you can seek out experts in, you can look for a, an astral doctor, you know, someone okay. that you admire, say Nikola Tesla or something like that. You can seek him out. You can meet uh, celebrities. There's no celebrity dumb on the other side. Everyone is there to, to help. And, um, you know, as long as they're in that place and people like Nikola Tesla, of course, and Yeshua, Jesus, seen him. Yeah. I've been with him, communicate with yeah. him. And um, the masters are there to help us. And so we can, as long as we have um, the ability and the and practice to raise our frequency enough to where we and make that intention, uh, mm -hmm. we can you know, move up high in frequency, which helps us here all the time. The more light we bring into our body, the more our body is healed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It vibrates at a higher frequency here. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I mean, makes you want to do it. Now, let me ask you. Good. So 
<laughs> I know, maybe I'll be inspired again to try. Um, you know, one of the things that I think about, though, is, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be so tired if I if I try this. And I know it takes effort. It's not like it just all of a sudden you're going to try it one day and it happens. I mean, I, I do know there's, there's work involved. Mm -hmm. But um, and I think I've heard of people sit talking about, well, I'm so tired when I wake up. Like I've been, I've been working all night. I've been astral traveling and then I wake up. Is that true? I, I've heard people say that too. And um, I've found that not to be true for me. Okay. okay. Uh, when, in when I find that people are tired, that there's probably uh, some resistance to something or something going on within them that is, um, that needs to, that, probably needs to be worked on in their physical life, you know, uh -huh. and, um, and that's my, maybe why they're traveling is to, maybe they were healing, healing, you know, takes, uh, takes energy. Okay. Yeah. 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 And what I've learned is nightmares are actually healing dreams. Oh, because okay. we're working on something that we haven't taken the time or don't know how to work on, don't have the tools to work on in our physical life. And so we're working on it with our guidance. And uh, it's really important too, I want to say, is to pay attention to our dream time, to our dreams, because there's so much going on there, uh, messages that we're getting and things like that. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and so nightmares would be something that, and Yeshua, yes. my main guide, main dude, Jesus is the one who, who let me know that nightmares are healing dreams. Oh, wow. Or what about repeated dreams, you know, over and oh, over? Repeated patterns. Yeah. Those are um, something that we need to look at. If we're, if we get a pattern, uh, especially if it's like a nightmare or something like that, or, or that makes us feel yucky or whatever, then that's our guidance, our higher self telling us there's something we need to pay attention to if we keep getting repeated dreams for sure. Yeah, right, right. And then can we, let's say, you know how they say if you keep having a night, maybe it's a nightmare, and then you want to change it, can you, and you purposely make it end different, so mm -hmm. it's ending different in that realm, will that affect this 3D, the 3D realm? Do you know what I'm saying? You know, I haven't ever, I haven't done that. Um, uh, of course, everything we do there, you know, affects us here and vice versa. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know how to answer that, but I would imagine if you did, if you were able to change something and you were lucid. Okay. I'll give you an example. Now I, I think I might understand a little bit better. Uh, when you end, when you enter the, the, um, higher realms in the conscious state, okay. Your fears are going to come up what you haven't healed is going to come up because nothing is hidden in the higher realms here. Okay. We're able to hide things, our physical body, you know, and uh, is able to hide our memories and hide our traumas and things like that. Things we're afraid of. Right. Okay. So, um, so things will come up that, uh, they will be, tr they'll come up that, that are on the surface for you to deal with. Okay. And so when I first started projecting, um, going out of body, I was, uh, I, I was met by these beings who were grabbing at me and just were really just, their features were distorted and they were scary. So I bring myself back right away. That's another thing. As soon as you think of your body, you're back. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, about three times and they were always there as soon as I project, there they are. So about the third time I thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm in the outer body state. Nothing can hurt me in the outer body state. Nothing can hurt me. And as soon as I thought that when they were there, they transformed into friendly beings, friendly human beings. And we were laughing and joking and I didn't have that experience anymore. So facing, wow. so facing your fears is what transforms them just like here. Right on the other side. But uh, yeah, if you have some fears that are um, about projecting, you can basically count on it. <laughs> if they're uh -huh. really strong fears, that they're going to show up some way somehow, but always know that nothing can hurt you in the out of body state. You don't have a physical body. Okay. 
Wow, yeah. wow. Okay, that's amazing. So can you give us some examples of maybe where you would have traveled? Like say, um, I'm curious about Master Yeshua because he's one of my guides as well. And Mother Mary, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, others too, but I am wondering when, well, okay. When you see Master Yeshua, what in the in that fate in that astral dimension, does he look like what we think of as a human? When I've seen him, yes, he does, and uh, and I compare him to my NDE when I saw him in mm -hmm. my two near death experiences. He was there. I was met by him, and yeah, he's he's just radiant. Looks, he's gorgeous beautiful. Um, and I believe that he appears to us the way that we might feel he looks like kind of thing. Yeah. Right. You know? And what we're comfortable with <clears throat> now he's light yeah. skin, but he's still olive light skin. Uh, he has hair about down to here. Gorgeous. His eyes are the main focus because his eyes are full of the universe. <laughs> they just, uh -huh. they're love, pure love, the universe. Yeah. And, and his energy, of course, is pure love. And um, yeah, he's, uh, I've seen him wearing a white robe with a red sash. Okay. And, um, and where he met me and we sat on a park bench and we chatted. Uh, I've seen, and that was the, my most recent. Before that, when I, he was helping me with my healing, he would show up in the funniest outfits. But I knew it was him. I could, he would project to me uh, wearing um, sunglasses for a while there because his eyes were so bright. And at the time when I was going through my healing after my NDE and remembering my um, traumatic past as a child, his light was really bright. His eyes were. And so I knew that was him. And he looked just like Jesus. Right. But he would be dressed kind of modern day or or um, really funny. Oh, my goodness. Now, yeah. you find him in a certain place. Like, let's just say if I wanted to down the road, if I'm able to astral, <laughs> <laughs> astral travel. Um, and if I wanted to purposely meet Jesus. Now, I've met Jesus here. I've uh -huh. seen him. He's kind of, I've seen him almost materialize several. Nice. I mean, like one day in particular. Whoa, it's strong. Oh, it's, it's nice. And that was actually a, so... Hmm. Uh, I mean, I can't, I haven't forgotten it. Everything changed that day. I mean, it's like I saw colors, lights, you know, everything was vibrating. And he and Mary showed up. Wow. Like Mother Mary? I, yeah, yeah. I was in a, a healing conference and we were working with each other one on one. There was about 300 of us in this room, but I had a, actually had a, a vision of him early in the morning, like around four in the morning. And he came again. He was in the white robe. He had the gold sun behind him and a mountain too with a gold sun. And he had his hands under somebody under their head. And he said, do this. This is what I did. And so he was doing energy work. And so he was just saying, do this. And so then it was that same day later when I was in the conference there, he showed, I mean, he showed up like, I could see him with my eyes open. There he was and Mary. They were always together. And then they were over there. And then they were over there. And then they were over there. And then by the end of the day, the colors, I was seeing so many colors. I couldn't see through the colors. It was so thick. Wow. That's and amazing. And then I had like lights out of my third eye. And I could just do this and it would be light up the conference room. I mean, from <laughs> a distance for 300 people. It would be like a spotlight, you know, like I just... I would move on. <laughs> There goes the light. There goes the light. It's like it was crazy. Everything wow. vibrated. That lasted about a week, and then it then it faded. <laughs> but I just remember so clearly. But if I wanted to go back to that astral, you know, if I wanted to do an astral travel and say, okay, I want to find Jesus, do I just say I want to find Jesus, or do I say, oh, I want to go to the Pleiades or Sirius B, or or how do I, you know, Is yeah. There, it always helps to have an intention for sure. And um, most of the time your prayers are answered in, you know, but it doesn't always happen right away sometimes like mm -hmm. with that. And so it's a frequency thing. Okay. Okay. And uh, 
pretty much, well, I, there was a time when I was calling out for him all the time. When I would go out of body, I'd call out for him all the time. Okay. He showed up quite a bit. Uh, not always, um, but he, yeah. And because the, the challenging thing with having out of body experiences and projecting is that staying out long enough. <laughs> okay. The average, the average time in our time of an out of body experience is between a couple seconds and maybe three or four minutes if you're lucky. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the challenge is going to be to stay out long enough to, to have a real, uh, involved experience. And so there's lots of tools and that's what the, you know, the books are all about is to help with that. And, in, in my course <laughs> and the courses yeah. out there is to help with prolong prolonging your experience. Right. Wow. Uh, but yeah, when you have an intention that helps tremendously, uh, he was showing up for me sometimes when I didn't even call for him, but you know, there's no time over there. He actually showed up. I want to say, I just want, I don't know why I want to share this, but for some reason I do, um, the morning of nine 11. Oh. Now I did not know what was happening. I was recovering from my, um, NDE from two, uh, 2001. Okay. Back then, uh, my body was healing and I was in bed when it happened and I was off work at the time cause I was out of work for a little while in the phone and I was having an out of body experience. And all, and all my relatives are showing up. My ancestors are showing up around me. I'm like, oh, well, this is cool. This is crazy. And then I see Yeshua. I see Jesus. And he's standing there. He's got his robe on. And he has a little boy next to him. He's standing with his arm around a little boy. Uh -huh. And I recognize him. And I go to him. And he uh, morphs into something that was... Uh, it's scary. <laughs> the little boy more, did? No, Yeshua did. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was weird. I knew it was him. Okay. But then he morphed into a person that was, um, that I didn't feel that was kind of scary. And then I woke, then I came back here and the phone okay. rang. That's what it was. The phone rang. And it was my mother calling me to tell me, turn on the TV. Yeah. Um, so what I got from that was that he was showing me that something was happening and that Ooh. he, yeah. Cause it was, it was a message. That's why he had come to me. Yeah. Yes. And, um, the, the little boy, I, you know, it could have been someone that he, that he picked up out of, out of, you know, there, cause there were so many people that were crossing over, but um, I feel that he was showing me that he, he's since he embodies God, right. Uh, source um, that he embodies all of it. Does oh, that yeah. make sense? The yeah, alpha and sure. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, is there any other like? It, um, I don't know. Just like on the dimension, you know, we talk about dimensions. A, a lot of people talk about the dim different dimensions. To me, it's just like right here, and it, it's just like it's a consciousness thing. But if you let's say can you choose to go to, or maybe is it really just right here? Let's say I want to pick seventh dimension or, you know, <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, I don't um, personally, I don't think about what dimension I want to go to. I usually, okay. yeah, my intention is to keep, to have a, as high an experience as possible, being a high vibrational experience as possible. Because okay. I understand that the more we know here and the more we can lift up our frequency, the easier it is when we do leave this, this physical body for good, right? Yes. And so yes. what he showed me was that it's a lot easier to lower your frequency at will than it is to raise your frequency at will. Ah. Right? Yeah. So uh, so I, may, I, um, I make affirmations of, uh, you know, things like that will lift my frequency. I love you. I love you, God. Um, I am love, things like that. Ohm is a good one uh, to help shoot me up in frequency when I, when I project. And, and I will say those affirmations sometimes, a lot of times before, as I'm falling asleep, that type of thing. As far as um, moving up to the seventh dimension, um, I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible, but that's a pretty high dimension for, our consciousness that if we're not 
used to moving into that high frequency. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, so it would take some work. I see. I, I see. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, let me see. What, 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 so is there anything that you want to share about some of your experiences, any stories or anything like that? Oh that my gosh. Yes. So many. Out? I've, I've journaled over 2000. So at oh least my two, God. 2000, at least. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's been 20 years, you know, over 20 years, 23 years. So, and that's my next book, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me think. Uh, okay, this one's kind of cool. Well, there's so many where I've seen myself as non-human beings, okay? Yeah. Purple beings. Um, I, okay, this one is, is pretty cool. So I projected and I'm standing in front of a double door, beautiful frequency, double door uh, room. Okay. I'm standing outside with a couple of other people and we're just, we're just kind of chatting and, and, an, and a, um, a gentleman runs up to us and he has a bald head and he's running, he's smiling and he um, comes up to me and we touch foreheads. And as soon as we touch foreheads, uh, his demeanor stops because I gave him information through our foreheads. Uh -huh, and yeah. His demeanor, I mean, his demeanor wasn't smile anymore. He knew that it was serious, serious thing. And what I did was I let him know that his brother or someone in his soul group that he was close to on the earth plane needed his help. Uh -huh. And um, not that he had to reincarnate, but he, um, the mission, it was a mission the mission was for him to come to earth and I was giving him that information, come to earth to um, uh, give his brother a, a come to Jesus moment type of thing, a really uh -huh. profound experience because he was addicted to, uh, and I got, you know, like math or something and he was on the streets and oh, it wow. was not, and he needed to get back on his path. Okay. Cause he was way off his path of what he needed to do because he, uh, whatever he needed to do was important for humanity or um, for his soul group. So he agreed. And it was like, do would you like, or do you want to take this mission? And he agreed. <laughs> and so we opened the double doors and go inside. And there are these bald headed beings sitting with their backs to the door, watching a screen on a wall. And there's about five of them. And they're watching this young man, which is his brother, who's basically lost because he's in that dire straits. And he walked in and, and I could see him on the streets and, and just in a really bad way. And he walked wow. in and uh, sat down to, to, and I was getting all this information. I brought that memory back to uh, go through a portal. They were going to help him with the information and go through a portal and appear in some way to his brother to uh, put him on a better path. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So that was really cool. That was. Wow. Really cool. mm -hmm. Do you know if that, if it helped him? Do you happen to know? Uh, I, I don't know, but I, my heart tells me yes, that it did. Uh -huh. yeah. But I don't oh, know goodness. logically. Yeah. I don't even know who he was, you oh. know, on the earth plane. Oh, I see. But, Got it. Yeah. So it's part oh. of the work I do there because you'll find out what what work you do on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, right, so. right, right. I know. I, I've been told my work, but different. I didn't do, I didn't have, I didn't do it through astral travel, but. Yeah. It's different when you're, at, uh, when you're actually aware of it and you're there in the work because you can bring so much more. Yeah. to to it does that make sense when you're in that conscious uh -huh. state yeah 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 well i mean i don't know if this is related or not or so when i was in mount shasta um two summers ago and we were doing a shamanic journey kind of through to the inside of the mountain you know the crystal mountain we were just going to take a look around and I mean, just a simple little thing. And then I met angels there and they sat me down, but it was very like, I felt like it would have been like a lucid dream, I guess. I mean, I transformed into a, a different being. They, we had a conversation and they told me what my sole purpose was. 
so that was actually pretty powerful. I mean, I have it's one yeah. of those again, I haven't forgotten that. Um, That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Right. I would know it, but I said, but when I and I and when they told me, I said, Well, I want to speak to the manager because I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you said that really? Yes, I did. Who's the, the manager? manager? Who's the manager? And they said, You're the manager. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, and then it was so interesting. They showed me that I had planned that from like the probably the first time we ever broke off from Source or whatever, whenever my first incarnation on Earth was, which was a different, I was a different kind of a being. I was a, mm -hmm. I don't know, I was a fairy or something. And mm -hmm. so uh, they showed me that's when I had planned it that long ago. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. But I wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I've, I've accepted you. it though. I've accepted yeah. it. And I, I it, it matches a lot of what I am doing, you know, on a soul level. Yeah. And so from that experience, I feel like, oh, well, we all, all of us have a soul job, a soul purpose. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. That reminds me. Um, well, I'll share another experience. Too. Yeah, go ahead, please. After my NDE, I was uh, projecting to the water world a lot as a mer. Yeah. yeah. I would end up, I would just end up underwater. And I'm like, I can't breathe because <laughs> I'm conscious mm -hmm. as me, as Sharon, right? I can't breathe. What's going on here? And so I would surface or bring myself back. <clears throat> but then I, I got to the point where, okay, I'm not really breathing. I just, I, I know I can breathe. All right. So I just have to calm down and realize that I can breathe. Okay. Tell myself rem and remember that. So then I was able to um, get over that for initial panic. And it one and there was one experience. And, and so I was able to, to, you know, do my thing underwater and it got to where I was doing it all the time. And I loved it so much. So, and I, it, whenever I'm, go I'm in an out of body state I, if I see water I'll dive right in huh. because I love doing it because mm -hmm. I'm a, a mermaid mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, this one experience which was really cool I project and I'm underwater and I look down no there's a dolphin in front of me and I recognize the dolphin and he's he's nodding like that and telling me to look down. I understand him telepathically. He's telling me that and I look down and I see that uh, I see my mer body, which I've seen many times. And I see I'm holding a, like a newborn baby, a newborn mer baby. And I'm nursing this little baby. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. And my body was completely different than this body. And, uh, who would I get emotional thinking about and I was just holding and nursing this baby, and it was just an amazing experience. Yeah. Wow. I was in that wow. space for a while, and then I came back. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the average uh, person watching this might think we're crazy talking about being a mermaid. Uh, but I know I've been mermaid as well, uh, and I have friends. We all know we've been mermaids together. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, totally. You can um, recognize mermaids once you, once you know your you know, what form you, you like to take, you recognize them, mm -hmm. you recognize mm -hmm. different types of beings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's my main one, you know, but, mm -hmm. but I know it's a one a right. Right. Uh, version of myself. Uh, so yeah, that's fun. Um, what about, have you, have you ever found yourself to be like, let's see. Hmm. Well, I mean, of course, you talked about being a ET, and we, I mean, in my belief system is we're all ETs. I mean, we all have that part of our multidimensional self where we have a, you know, an ET body, what I call an ET body. Um, so, do you? I mean, have you seen that very often? Or I, I'm seeing it more and more <laughs> lately okay. because I'm I'm telling my peeps, my galactic peeps, that I want to be able to see see the um, non human like 
beings that are on the planet and that we're going to find out about and are on the ships that I'm on the ships with. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause I know I'm there with them. Uh, yeah. So I'm seeing more and more. Yeah. That I um, have been able to take on the form of uh, or do take on the form of a uh, non-human type of being. I've seen myself with blue, be beautiful cobalt blue skin <clears throat> with kind of um, marbled, beautiful skin, bald head. I've also seen myself as um, a, uh, and I mentioned a purple, lavender, uh, light uh, lavender color with long legs. Uh -huh. And I'm looking at them. Okay. I'm looking at them and I, I, I feel a feminine feeling. There's a group of us. And, uh, and I'm looking at them. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Just no hair, you know, just these long legged lavender type beans and long arms, long fingers. <clears throat> And she says to me, we're from the League of, I thought she kept saying Mars. And I said, oh, the League of Mars. She goes, no, not Mars. The League of Marn or Marn, Narn. And I kept saying Mars. She goes, no, not Mars. It's like, listen to me. And, <laughs> and she says, look down. And so I looked down and I was one of them. Yeah. And I realized, and then she tells me that we're going on a mission and we went on a rescue mission. Uh-huh. And, and every time I talk about this, I get emotional. I did go into hypnosis to gather some more information on it because what we had done was we rescued a being that I remember uh, that I uh, had an out-of-body experience where I saw myself as this <clears throat> uh, aquatic oh. being who was, stood upright and went to a swam under, it was like under the ocean or something or at the bottom of the ocean through some kind of a tunnel to another area of a planet or, you know, through a, I don't know, um, because his, his community was uh, starving or he went to, to do something to find out what was happening to his community. Cause he fit that type of thing. Cause think uh, the, uh, his food, their food was being poisoned, that kind of thing. Oh so I saw goodness. myself that's being that being, but he was captured by okay. these human-like beings, humans, and being experimented on, okay? Was and that so, on Earth that he was captured on Earth or somewhere else? I don't know. I don't feel it was on Earth. I, I okay. don't know. Um, but as the purple being, we went to rescue him. Yeah. Because it was a big deal. Because he was the leader of a community, a big leader, and he had a lot of information that they were trying to extract and, and abilities. I feel, I feel like he was shape shift. He was a shape shifter or something. <clears throat> and so we went to rescue him. That was our role. That was our mission to rescue him. And we did. And I brought wow. that, all that memory back. Okay. So let me ask you that because I, I know somebody else who does similar work. Mm. Um, Res like rescue mis missions. Now, um, when you, and I've never been able to understand it from her, so I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> a little, you know, That's out of my, answer. out of yeah. my awareness. Or, okay, so when you go, you're in your light body, right? Or are you, have you actually been, you're the purple being, not in the light body anymore? Uh, I call it reality shifts. Okay. When I leave my physical senses, when I disengage from my physical senses at night, I am in another body. Okay. So I don't, I don't have the awareness of traveling there. I am okay. just there. I, I am see. in this, this other body. Okay. Which is just as physical, if not more physical than here. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. And I was on okay. another rescue mission where I was a, a human and I, and I just reality shift. I looked down and I'm holding a EMP rifle, a big EMP rifle in my arm, in my hand. And it was big and heavy, this black, uh, um, big rifle. And I knew it was a pulse rifle, Mag, you know, uh, I knew it was, and I know that, and I'm standing with three others and were human. And uh, I know I'm human and we're standing above uh, some kind of indoor, an indoor um, 
type of building. It feels like it might be underground. And I see these containers, colored, con big, large co colored containers. And there's bots all over the containers doing something to the containers, these little bots. And there were different colors too. And I shoot and I take my EMP rifle and, and we're talking on communicate, you know, communication devices. I say, I got the blue one and I pulse up the gun and I shoot it. All right. I got the red one and I pulse up my gun and I knew how long it would take to pulse it and, um, you know, to, to take out these little, these little bots, you know, these little robots. Okay. So we were doing that and I felt like it was a rescue mission because I felt there, there was a, and I saw a little girl, I saw a child with blonde hair and, um, and so I, and then we end up on a, um, and I didn't bring the whole memory back, but I brought big pieces back. Then we end up on some kind of tram or something. And we're looking at, and we're talking about the mission and we're, we're not in uniform or anything. We're young, like in our twenties or whatever. Uh -huh. And we're talking about what we had just done. And, and um, yeah. And I felt like we were this, we were mercenaries that were hired to do things. Okay. Did that feel like that was on earth? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like um, when you're doing your travels that you can, I mean, I know you can see your past, present, future because it's all one anyway, you know, from mm -hmm. our soul perspective. But if you were to, let's say, make an effect of an event, let's say you healed an event. I don't know, whatever it is. Let's just say, uh, you had, let's just say pretend on earth you had a boyfriend who treated you bad. And so you went up and you healed it. Is that going to make a difference or is that? Do you, know you mean you I mean? healed the past event? Are you saying yeah. you changed a past mm -hmm. event? Right, right. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. you can change a past event. I believe you can change it in the present. Um, okay. Change okay. The, the effect of it. Yeah, by where you are in the present. But I'm not sure. And I, what I understand is that this matrix is um, falling anyway. This the matrix we're in now. We're moving into a higher vibrational ma or new matrix. Yeah, construct, and so we we really can't change anything. We can go back and look, and go back just like going to the Hall of Records. Okay, we do. We can't. What I understand is we can't really change things from the past perspective. We okay. can, you know, be there in it and observe. Okay, but we aren't well, maybe, able to change yeah. things. Maybe we can heal though our emotional response to the past. Well, that would be for the right. present. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. In the present. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know it seems crazy in a certain way. I mean, <laughs> it's a little bit a lot yeah. to, to get your mind, at least for me, to get my mind around it all. No, yeah. me too. I, I'm i fascinated with uh, the way time works and doesn't, you know, how it really is and, and different realities and different frequencies. And um, yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Now let me see. I know I, I had another question. Oh, so I want to just caution anybody who's, I mean, I think I want to caution, maybe you should caution, like if somebody's wanting to try this on their own, um, like, you know, if to me it's like, okay, be careful, you know, careful, don't do this unsupervised or something like that. Would you suggest that? Or do, you, do they need a group and support or anything? Um, I don't know if you need a group, but it helps to have support. Definitely. I would suggest study about it, research it. And do the exercises that are, um, you know, that are in in books that uh, that are from the masters. They're basically masters, you know. And okay. uh, you know, and I have the exercises that I like to use on my own. I like, and um, there's other exercises. There's the, you know, affirmation. There's a target method where you think about where you want to be. I want to go to the door, you know. And, and as soon as you feel your body leaving, go. You go. You project yourself mm -hmm. to the door. I like to use movement where I imagine I'm jumping up and down on my bed as I fall asleep, that kind of thing. And then during the middle of the night, there's times where I'm jumping up and out of my body, jumping up and down on my bed, uh, okay. you know, or swinging in a swing, 
that because you move from one consciousness to the next and the more you focus on something uh you're going to be there right i see you create it so i would say uh to read up on out of body experiences there's lots of uh, now that i'm a book person so i like to read books but there's lots of people out there you know that do videos that are um that someone you feel comfortable with that might have um a guidance for guidance for you uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. but yeah it's you can't really you can't get hurt you okay. know okay well that's good uh, to know that's what i want to know yeah there's a okay. lot of mis bad information uh, from, you know, uh, the old teachings of the religions and things like that, that say that you shouldn't be doing this because it's, okay. you know, there's demons and blah, blah, blah. I've never okay. come across any demons. Okay. I have not come across, um, anything that can hurt me. Now there, uh -huh. there have been times where I felt like something was going to hurt me, but then as soon as I knew that I was in my, you know, astral body, I was fine and I transformed okay. it. It doesn't mean you're not going to go to a, um, a lower realm and experience something that might be kind of scary, but, but know that you can get yourself out of it, bring yourself back mm -hmm. and raise your mm -hmm. frequency. So uh -huh. it also, de it depends on what you have in your mindset, what you have in your mind. Um, if you enter it with a lot of fears, work through your fears first, right? I see. Uh, and, and know that you're, that's something that you, um, you're going to have to deal with. Uh, but you're going within, we're going within you. How can you get hurt when you're within your own self? <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, you make it seem so much more approachable than I imagined it, you know? So because it's part of, we're, we're moving within our soul is what we're doing. Okay. And into the real world. Okay. That's what we're doing is we're moving into it within our soul and discovering our soul and okay. how, you know, how multidimensional and beautiful and our soul is. I see. God, I mean, that sounds amazing. Okay. Now I, you know, did, did I, you just let my anxiety go way down. Oh, okay. So, so <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> and, and does meditation have anything to do with the ability to um, do an, o, have an OBE? Well, meditation definitely will help tremendously because you have to have focus. Okay. okay. Um, and, you know, in order to have any type of an experience, it's more than a couple seconds. Right. And so, or, <laughs> yeah. So having focus helps um, definitely and meditation helps you with focus. So, and also meditation helps heal, helps yeah. us go within. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, yeah, highly, highly recommend having a regular practice of yeah. meditation along with, if you want to do, you know, want to have a practice with, um, out of my experiences in astral travel and lucid dreaming. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Lovely. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to share that you think is important that I, you know, didn't mention or. Yeah. Uh, mm. Know that it takes a little while. If you do want to practice it, it can take a little while. Okay. And it, and it's a regular practice. It's not something that you do once, once every, every two or three weeks or once a week. Oh, I forgot to do that. You know, it's, it's an everyday practice and it doesn't mean that you have to do anything that makes you lose sleep. You just keep your mind on it. And the more you read about it and the more you focus on it, the more you will retrain, will re reprogram your conscious and subconscious mind that, that you want to be aware of your higher plane travels and your higher plane self. Okay. So as you have that awareness, then the rest follows and then you just keep your mind on it. And okay. um, yeah, so it's, it's a practice just like everything else. A practice. You know? Yeah. So would you suggest for somebody just starting out, maybe starting with the dream journal and then yes. moving to lucid dreams, then moving to the astral travel, that kind of a progression perhaps? Definitely. Lucid dreams will just start coming. Once you start okay. working on, you know, with your dreams and writing them down, that's the first step. Thank you, Kim, is to write, you know, find, find something that about your dreams to write that down. Uh, and, and the best way to remember your dreams is as soon as you wake up, don't move. 
<laughs> that because it goes away. Don't move. Don't think about your day. Don't think about having to go to the bathroom or anything. Just think, okay, where was I? What was I doing? Even if it's just a little, little thing like, oh, I felt good or I felt bad or anything, just you know, record that, and then you'll be able to record more and more as you um, as you start to remember things, and uh, make sure you record them because that's really important because it goes away just like crazy. And so what okay. you're doing is you have to bring your memory. You have to use your memory and bring that back, those memories back from the higher planes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, really, it, it just seems so inviting and approachable now uh, since we've had this conversation. Yeah. It's just been like a mountain before to me. And so I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to go back and look at the handout that you gave me back in 2016 <laughs> <laughs> that I've kept at my bedside for all these years. Yeah. That's what, that's eight years. It's been at my bedside and I've looked at it a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the programming. We have this programming, you know, that it's not, it's not really attainable or, or, you know, teachable. And then we don't know, how, you know, just like you said, like this big mountain, and it's not, it's, it's natural for us is re really what it is. It's natural. Yeah. We just forgot. Yeah. How. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. beautiful. And I feel even as we're talking here right now, and I know we've talked about master Yeshua, but I feel his presence. Uh, and I, and I feel what I feel right now from him is like an acceptance. Like, I, I mean, I, it's like he's in the room right here and, and yeah. Like, this is beautiful. Like, it's wonderful. Actually, he's giving me the thing to you, like to give you a hug, right? To, to, um, you know, like we're sisters or, you know, or, you know, yes. he's our brother, that kind of a feel. And, yeah. and so I just know that he's acknowledging that, that this is great. This is wonderful. It's mm -hmm. not the only way to meet Master Yeshua, but it is a way, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, and I think we should, and, and we don't, if we don't astral travel, that's not the only way to, do our healing work, but it is a way. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, um, it's a really helpful tool. Uh, like I said, to, pro I feel to progress our spiritual awareness, it's a really big yeah. way. And when you think about it, there's all the masters actually do it. <laughs> they okay. really do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's, and it's natural. Like I said, it's natural. Once you dive deep into our soul and dive deep into ourselves, it just starts happening. Yeah. Okay. Natural. I just love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And um, do you have, I want to just let everybody know about your website and what you're doing. Um, sure. So I know your website is Sharon Sananda, like your name, mm -hmm. .com. Yes. Okay. And you also have uh, Kumara kumaraacademy.com yes okay you have a youtube channel yes ascension, ascension gateway gateway yeah. at sharon kumara yeah. ascension right? gateway yeah uh, ascension you can find gateway. it at sharon kumara too yeah okay ascension gateway so i'd love everybody to check your youtube channel <laughs> i know you do interesting things on there mm -hmm. um so, and is there anything else that you want to share with us about what's going on? What are you doing? Oh, you've got a couple books coming out. I do. I have a couple books. One is uh, due to be released and you can pre-order. It's a compilation book of people who've had pretty profound NDEs. And I was okay. invited to be a contributing author in that. And that comes out March 31st. Yeah. And, uh, and then oh, my death. book. Oh. Yeah, wait. This one's called Death, a Compilation of Transformative NDE. Yes. Okay. And now you've got a book coming out. Yes. In June. I do. My personal book, my first book, 10 years or more in the making. <laughs> Finally, I've finished it and I'm in the editing process now. And that is, uh, that will be out in the summer, June 21st. Okay. And, um, yeah. And I, I'm really excited about that. Also, I do have a free, I want to mention Kim that I have a free presentation coming up this month on February 23rd. And, it, and it's on my website uh, on out of body experiences and Ooh. astral travel. It's free. Ooh. It's on Zoom. You're welcome to come. I'll, I'll do a presentation and then we leave room. I'll leave room for questions and an open forum, that type of thing. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was lovely, Sharon, spending this time yes. with you. Oh, well, thank you, Kim. And it's always good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you thank too. You, everyone. Yeah. Blessings, blessings. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Bye.